conditions. Uh, we're going to start off with an example and just talk about it. So it says, H.J. Cody is selecting its grad committee for a group of 10 students. If the grad committee must select a president, a vice president, and an event coordinator, how many groups could they make? So if you read this, we have a group of students that are being selected for the grad committee, correct? We've done questions like that like three times now. And we've always said order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're the first person in the committee, second, third, or first, fourth person in the committee. It made no difference. If you read this question now, it does make a difference. And the reason it makes a difference is they've given titles to each spot. So you're not just a random person on the committee, you're a specific person on the committee. So you're in a completely different situation. If I need to pick a committee of three, a president, vice president, and event coordinator, from McGregor, Taylor, Hunter, and Caden, my committee is very different if Taylor's president, McGregor's vice president, Hunter's event coordinator, than if McGregor's president, and then Taylor's vice president, and Hunter's event coordinator. Those are now different committees because they're doing different roles within the committee. So in a situation like this, Order does matter. And that's always going to be the first thing you ask. Does order matter? If there's a role to be played, order matters. Another situation where you might see that order matters is if you have a question and it's like, I want to pick two people to start my hockey game. One of them has to be a center, one of them has to be a defenseman. Order now matters when I'm selecting them because they have a role they're playing for me. I'm not just picking two people to say go play. I'm saying here's one person for this job, here's one person for that job. Specific. Okay? When order does matter, the way we've learned to do it so far is fundamental counting principle. And that's still going to work in this situation. So if I want to do this, I would say there's three spots to be taken. President, Vice President, Event Coordinator. President, Vice President, Event Coordinator. There's three spots that you need to claim. How many people could I put in the first spot? Ten. Because there's ten people that I could choose from for that president spot. So I put ten in there. Now that there's 10 in that spot, how many do I have left for the vice president spot? None. And how many for the event coordinator spot? Eight. That's saying order matters. So it depends on where you were picked. To figure out the actual answer on these questions, you always multiply these numbers together. When you multiply these numbers together, you're going to get 700. That's how many different committees you could make, because now the order matters how you're selecting. Is this question a combination question? No. It is not a combination question. Why is it not a combination question? Because the order matters. <laughs> the order matters, so it's not a combination question. We have a name for it. So if it's not a combination question, it's a permutation question. So that's what this entire lesson is going to be about. It's permutation questions. And when the order does matter. Just like yesterday we had that NCR button, that was for combinations. We have an NPR question for when order does matter. Permutations are when order does matter, so it's called an NPR, that's what it looks like. And just like NCR, there's a formula. The formula will be given to you. It looks like this. The N and the R mean the exact same thing as yesterday. So N is the number of people you get to arrange, and R is the number that you're actually arranging. So in our last question, we would have had 10 with N, 
and three was R, because you had ten students to choose from, and you were arranging three of them, and order matters. So that is in there for your notes. N is the number you can choose from, R is the number actually being arranged in both forms. You're going to notice that typically, if you see the word select, and you see the word arrange, that's usually a good like indication of what type of question you should be doing. Uh, not always, but sometimes, most of the time, select means combination, arrange means permutation. And not all the time, it's not like a steadfast rule, but if you're really stuck, that can sometimes help you with a hint. Because when you're selecting, that usually means you don't actually care about the order that you're selecting. When you're arranging, that clearly is saying that the order matters. Not always a guarantee, just a hint to sometimes help guide. All right. Part of this, and a question that's actually on the diploma in some years, is one exactly like this. So you just have to look at a bunch of things and decide, is it a permutation or a combination? So I think two years ago they had a question on the diploma that was possibly <coughs> identical to this. I just changed the school. And you had to go ahead and decide permutation or combination for each one. So when you know how to use it, check in order matters. If it does, it's a perm. If not, it's a con. really easy to get those two things mixed up. Yesterday, I talked about the fact that you have locker combinations. And the order matters when you put in your locker combination. And the trick to remember is that it shouldn't be called a locker combination, it should be called a locker permutation, because the order matters. So sometimes, when you get stuck, that little trick might help you remember which one's which. Because a locker combination is actually called the wrong thing. But that trick actually might stick in your brain and remind you, oh yeah, permutation order matters. Okay, in the situations below, decide whether it's a perm or a com. You don't need to solve it. Just decide which one you would use. So go ahead and try it on your own. Decide permutation or combination for each one of those. And then we'll go and talk through it. I just want to give you a second to read and check. Let's talk through each one of these. The first one says selecting four students from a group of ten to pick up garbage. Does it matter if you were the first or the fourth student to select it? Definitely not. You're all doing the same thing. So this thing would be a combination. Because order doesn't matter. Question B. Selecting five toppings out of eight toppings for a pizza. So if I'm making a pizza, I've got eight things I can choose from to put on the pizza, but I can only choose five. If I choose a bacon and pepperoni pizza, is that different than a pepperoni and bacon pizza? Same thing. So that would be a combination. That's another one that comes up a lot, is like selecting topics for something. Notice in both of these, the word select was in fact used to signify it's a combination as well. So that can be a little hint if you're desperate. If, if the topics had to be like layered a certain way, then it would be a combination. Yeah, so if they said there's five different ways you could layer the toppings, and that would make a different pizza each time, yeah. Uh, a good example of that is like cakes. They say the first layer, second layer, third layer, and when you're changing the layers, you're changing the way the cake looks. So that would change the entire cake. Yeah, yeah and that's why it doesn't always work. Because it, this next one, I'll say, select two teachers from H.G. Cody to be the new principal and vice principal. 
they've selected two people to be administrators, but then they gave them roles. So when they give them roles, all of a sudden it matters how you're selected, right? So in this case, if order does matter, it's a permutation. <coughs> if you pick me and Ms. Shaw to be the administrators, me being the first person picked and being principal, and then her being vice principal is different than other way around. So if you pick her first and then me second. So order does matter, permutation. D, selecting a starting goalie and a starting captain from 11 students for a game of soccer. So you need to pick two people, but those two people have roles, right? You're a goalie or you're a captain. We're saying we're selecting one for each. It's a weird way to pick a team if you're doing a soccer hit. But you're picking them and you're giving them a role. So it does, in fact, matter, making it up. Uh, the reason I bring the sports analogy in is they like to involve sports in these questions for many different reasons. And they say weird things like that. Where sometimes the logic, like if you played sports, you're like, that doesn't make sense. You wouldn't pick someone random to be the goalie. Like you would pick the goalie to be the goalie. Uh, but they just assume you're selecting it random. As if it's like a six-year-old soccer game. Right? Where it's like, everyone gets a turn or something crazy. <laughs> um, the other thing they'll do is they'll talk. I've seen basketball questions a lot because there's only five positions in basketball. So they'll, and they're all different. Like they can label each one differently. So that each spot is a different role. Does that make sense? But anytime a role is given, they're saying it's a permutation because it matters which role you play. All right, let's solve a couple of these. So we got some examples. First one says, Mr. Kennedy is making a six-digit code for his iPhone and doesn't want to repeat any, any of the numbers. How many different codes could he make? You can do this two ways. Okay, the first way I'm going to do it, the way we already know, the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle says, all right, you want a six-digit code, that means there's six slots. For each one of those slots, you have ten numbers to choose from. But since you can't repeat numbers, that's going to change how things happen. So the very first number you pick, you have ten numbers to choose from. The second number, however, you have nine to choose from because you've already taken one away. Third slot, eight, then seven, and six, and five. So that would be how you could make your six digit code using the fundamental counting principle. Punch those in your calculator, and it's like 100,000. 150,000. 151,200. That's how many ways you could use the fundamental counting principle to figure this out. <coughs> Fine, Daniel, like, that's good. It's a good method. If you used it, that's cool with me. We just learned a new way to use it. And that new way to use it would be to say, hey, this thing's a permutation because the order matters. So if the order matters, it's got to be a permutation. Now I ask myself, what do N and R mean in my little formula N, P, R? N is the number of things I can choose from. So how many numbers do I have to choose from? Ten. I have ten numbers to choose from. Now how many do I actually get to choose? Six. And if you punch that into your calculator, you're going to get the exact same answer as this one which is 161,200. So sometimes, you actually will have choice on which way to do it. In the first one, like this question, you could have done fundamental counting principle or permutation, and you're good either way. All right, example four. Actually, just before we do example four. I want to talk about, because sometimes the question comes up, and like, someone in the room might be thinking it and not saying it right now, is if I could have got firms the whole time, why did I ever learn fundamental counting principle? Mm -hmm. 
And, and that's a fair question. Permutation works with order matters, and I'm not repeating something. So if this question had let me repeat numbers, doing n arrange or 10 arrange six of them wouldn't work because that doesn't allow for repetitions. You would have to use the fundamental calculator principle, and it would be 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So that's why you need to understand both. Permutations work when order matters and when you can't repeat things. All right, cool. Example 4A. How many ways can the letters in the word frankly be arranged if all the letters are used? So the first thing I want to check is do I have any repetitions in frankly? None of those letters are repeated. So that means I'm allowed to use a permutation or a combination. That's good. Is this a permutation or a combination? Does the order matter when I'm putting those things in place? If I was to choose this as my letters in the order they go in, is that different than if I choose this? Are these different arrangements? Definitely. How are they different? Well, order matters on where I put that one. When I put the Y at the end, it created something. When I put it at the start, it created something different. The order matters in this one. If order matters, it's a permutation. It's always going to be drilling at home. You have to know. Does the order matter? In this case, it definitely does. So, if I want to rearrange the words frankly using permutations, I need to use n, p, r. I need to decide what n is equal to and what an r is equal to. What's n equal to in this case? Okay. Seven. How do you know seven take it? Seven letters. There's seven letters to take from. Exactly. So this has to be seven letters. <laughs> How many of those letters do I actually want to arrange? All seven of them. So it's seven, <coughs> seven. If you put that in your calculator, it's also going to equal, what's the number here? 54. 5,040. 54. 54. Oh, did you? You use combination. Does yours say 10C or 7C7? Yeah. yeah. 7P7, definitely different. So that's also something to keep track of. And your calculator is one button away, so it's pretty easy to make that mess up. So always double check those things. 5040 is definitely the answer. It can also be represented using the formula for 7P7. And if you look back on the page of the formula, you just have to plug in 7 where N's are and 7's where R's are. So this thing could also be represented as 7 factorial divided by 7 minus 7 factorial. I'm just putting the numbers in for the letters in the formula. What's 7 minus 7? Zero. Zero factorial means nothing, and it equals 1. You don't need to really understand that, but it does equal 1. So that means this bottom thing is useless. So that same answer could also be written as 7 factorial. So you need to know both ways to get it. Because remember I told you sometimes they don't actually write the number, they write the factorial version of the number. Okay, B. What if only four of the letters are used? It's still a permutation. <laughs> you still have 7 to take from, so it's 7 P. But now how many do you actually get to write? Four. Only four of them. If you put that into your formula, it would look like this. It would be 7 on the top divided by 7 minus 4, which equals 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial. Or in your calculator, you just go 7P4. Anybody have the answer for that one? 
both of these are valid answers. <coughs> it's just sometimes people will do it, they only understand the way they use the calculator, but then all the multiple choice answers are like that. And they're like, what am I doing? And the way to do it is to use the formula. And that'll tell you which one you want. All right, C. If the letter A must be the first letter and all letters are choosed. You could use the fundamental counting principle for this. <laughs> yeah, are you just in my hair, I know. You could use the <laughs> fundamental counting principle to do this, or you could still use permutations. The way I could still use permutations on this thing, the restriction is that A must be the first letter. So I know I have A, but then I have six other things. Right? I have to have it that way. So I could use the fundamental counting principle, those 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, multiply all together. Or I could say, hey, there's only six letters left, and I want to arrange all six of them. And the A is the first letter every time, so it makes no difference. 6P6, if I sat in my calculator. Either way works, right? You could use fundamental counting principle, but I think you'll find that if you get good at just using the permutations part, that's a little faster. So if they're the same number on both sides, will they be like, you know, how it was 7 factorial, like the second and 7? Yep. So if this would be 6 feet, Yep, because the bottom is just canceling itself out. And if you did 6, C6, it'll always equal 1. So that's also not Go away, fly. Go away, go away. He's going to die today. I've hit him so many times and he hasn't died. Me too. I like smack his videos so he's still me. But I hope it's not. Okay, next question. Mind boggling. Hey, if you were to read that on a test, a test especially, I can guarantee panic, and I can guarantee that very few of us get it right. Because it's happened before on the Poma test, and that's exactly what happens. So we've seen these questions before where they say, here's an octagon or a hexagon, and each corner has a dot, and you need to make a triangle within that shape. And it's always like, what is happening? It's just a complex question. If you break it down and use what we know, it's not quite as challenging as you think. They'll always provide a picture if they say something like this, because it's not fair to assume you remember what an octagon is, or a hexagon, or a heptagon, or a decagon, or a heptagon, or a dodecagon. Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them. They go up to like a hundred or something. 100? So, they'll, yeah, well, yeah, but if you didn't, it's a little fast. They'll provide a picture. An octagon has eight sides, so you'll draw it over. And the sides are, uh, it's going to be a bad octagon. Okay. I usually do my octagons like this. The UFC. <laughs> yeah, it stops. So they'll always draw a picture with eight sides to show you what an octagon looks like because they can't assume you know. And it says it has a point on each vertice. That means each corner has a little dot. So you should have eight sides Eight dots. The best way to draw these things, honestly, you know the top two lines be parallel, and you know the two side lines be parallel, and they connect them. I think that's honestly the best way to do it. So if you're looking, if you're trying to draw it right now, the two top lines will be parallel, the two side lines will be parallel, and then connect them. Oh man, I couldn't draw with Dan. So I, I don't blame you if you can't. I'd be in the same boat. Look at the octagon that I cheated. <laughs> Okay, here's the picture that describes the first sentence. The second sentence is when it gets harder. It says, if a triangle is to be made inside of the octagon by connecting three dots of lines, how many different triangles could be made? 
first thing you're always going to ask yourself. You know this is statistics. You know that's the question, right? This is our unit. There's two things we've learned. We've learned perms and comms. So my question to you is, does the order matter when you're making that triangle? So the triangle, let me draw one. I could draw from here to here to here. The way I drew that triangle was I chose three corners and then I connected the dots. And I went here first, here second, here third. I'm going to draw another triangle. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go one here, two here, three here. If I had drawn those lines perfectly, they'd be right on top of each other. They'd be the same triangle. So does the order matter in which I pick my corners? It does not matter. So order doesn't matter. So it is a combination. That's always going to be the first thing. You know when you see a question like this, it's terms and comms. you got to decide if it's a perm or if it's a comm. It's the hardest part. A question like that, that's hard. It's hard to even picture what you're doing, right? That's why I draw it out and say, okay, I just drew a triangle by picking three corners. What's that look like? What does that mean to me? And I try to think it through critically before I actually start doing any math. If it's a combination, I know it's got to go in this format. N, C, I. N is the number of things I'm selecting from. R is the number of things I actually select. What am I selecting? I'm selecting points on the shape, right? That's what I'm selecting. So how many points do I have to select from? I have eight things I can select from. How many am I actually selecting? Three of them. If I want to make a triangle, I need three points for that triangle. That's going to be your answer. You put that in your calculator, no idea what that answer is. 56? There's 56 different triangles I can build inside that octagon. That question, the reason I use that one is that was on the Dash 1 diploma exam three years ago. And the provincial, it was a uh, numeric response question. So you had to know the answer to be able to fill it in. You couldn't guess your way through using the multiple choice questions. And the provincial average on that question was maybe like 30% of the province got it right. That's low. That's your dash one map, right? So I know that's where a whole bunch of you are hoping to go next. That's not that hard when you break it down, is it? So the province is sitting there going, that's not that hard of a question. But man, you read it, it's hard. And if you get in that situation, it's not easy to think your way to the solution. The solution itself is easy. It's the thinking to get there that's hard. That's why I use that question in this classroom. It's applicable to both both classes, dash one and dash two. All right, number six. It says a class of eight girls and 12 boys has been selected to make a committee of four. The committee must have both a male and a female president and both a male and a female vice president. How many different committees can be made? So this thing is complicated as well because it's got a whole bunch of restrictions put into it. And there are restrictions in weird ways. So you're selecting a committee of four, but within that committee, there's special things, right? There's the male president. There's the male vice president. And then there's the female president and the female <coughs> vice president. So there's <coughs> two restrictions in there. One, they're restricting the gender for each spot. And two, they're restricting the role of each block. So that's why it's kind of a weird question. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to view this as like two separate committees, right? This is my committee for the males. 
This is my committee for the females. And I'm going to somehow mash those things together. So if I pretend, all right, how many ways can I select just the males for president and vice president? The first thing I'm asking myself, permutation or combination? It's a perm. Why is it a perm? The order matters because they have a role to play. Order matters. So it's a permutation. I know it's got to go N, T, R. Order matters. What's my N? How many people can I select from? Just the boys, right? That's the restriction. They said it had to be a male president. So I don't have 20 people to pick from. I've got 12 people to pick from. So I'm 12, P, and how many boys do I want? Two of them. So N, P, two. And that will create the boys side of the committee. The next thing I want to create is the female side of the committee. First thing I'm asking myself, does the order matter? It definitely does matter, right? Female presidents is different than female vice president. So that means it's going to be a permutation. And you know what, just to take a pause for this question, if they had said you had to have a male president and a male vice president, and then two female committee members, would the order have mattered for the females? It wouldn't have. So you could mix in perms and comms at the same time. So you do have to ask yourself that question every time you're doing it. How many females do I have to choose from? P. P. How many do I want? Two. 12P2 is how I select my boys. 8P2 is how I select my girls. No. Hey, how do you, how is this 12P2, what's that equal? 132. 132. And 8P2, is that? 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. 6. Okay. So you should be 8 6. Okay. One hundred and thirty-two ways I could select the boys. 56 ways I could select the girls. Now is the big question. How do I connect those two things together? You have two options, multiplication or addition. You have to decide which one's right. If you want to multiply, you're saying these two selections affect each other. So if I have a different female, then it affects the overall committee. If you want to add them, you're saying these two committees have nothing to do with each other. The question was, if you wanted a committee of four. So that means the committee is different if the girls change and even if the boys stay the same. So my committee of McGregor and Quinn is different if it's Hannah and Tay Tay with them or if it's Hannah and Cammy with them. Okay, that's a different overall committee. So that means you're multiplying these things together. That is tricky. I guarantee you on multiple choice test, 132 plus 56 would be one of your options. So 132 times 56 is the right option. So what is that? 392. Yes. That's how many separate committees you can make. These perm and calm questions sometimes can feel pretty easy, especially if someone's guiding. When you're doing them on your own, not so easy. The reason I'm doing this unit first, so I'm doing statistics and terms and comps first. We're just about done with terms and comps, by the way. Um, we will finish on Monday, so the unit will be over, over 